What about vocal projection? Mm -hmm. uh, so like for me, for many years, I was very quiet and I had a hard time projecting my voice. You know, people would often ask me to repeat myself. Now on Zoom, this is not as much of an issue because you have microphones, but in the real world, you just have to rely on your vocal cords. I moved to New York City at one point, then all of a sudden that forced me to get loud, right? Right. Because that's a very loud city. So if you're not loud, uh, people are just literally not going to hear you out of mm -hmm. no far, fault of their own. So uh, how do you coach people through that issue of projecting their voice? Because in the theater context, you have to be very good at vocal projection. Yes. So what's interesting about this whole idea, right, the idea of vocal projection in conjunction with presence. So first off, when we are coaching, when I'm coaching students to project, usually what happens is you have them stand at the back of the stage or you have them stand upstage and project through the theater. So whatever it is that they, whatever it is, monologues or, or just speaking, you want the person in the back of the room to be able to hear them. Now, this is for specifically for theater, right? This is specifically for theater. When we are in places with other people, whether it's Zoom or like, I, I'm considering this a place I am with you, right? The thing is that it's awareness that we have to be considering. What am I trying to say? How important is it? And what, to what do I want people to listen, right? There is a modulation that you, that I coach, right? The thing is when we're talking like this, when we're saying things really quickly and when we're talking at this kind of speed, it gives the impression that maybe we're nervous and maybe we don't really understand what we're talking about. And in this speed, people can't even listen to us. They don't even want to listen to us, right? It doesn't matter that I'm excited and bubbly and I'm excited about what I'm saying. The speed at which I'm talking is making people think that maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, right? So what we do is, what I do is, I do coach people to sit in their bodies, to look directly, make eye contact with each individual person that they are speaking to. And it's not the range. It's not how loud I'm speaking, right? It's not really how soft I'm speaking, but it's how I use those things to my advantage. Is this important? Then you need to know about it. Do I want you to feel safe? Do I want you to think about something? Then I'm going to modulate my voice so that you lean in a little bit, mm -hmm. right? So these types of things are going to help just the range. And we're talking a lot about awareness and being aware of what you can do with your voice really is going to help you understand what type of presence you are trying to bring to the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like that you're getting right to the point, right to the root issue which is important because a lot of people will look at vocal projection and that is a, a surface manifestation of some deeper challenge. You know, it could be anxiety around being in the spotlight uh, mm -hmm. or, or uh, just lack of comfort with their own voice. Um, but also to your point, it's like, are you highlighting the right information? Are you giving this information or that information the attention and the energy that it deserves? Mm -hmm. you know, if I have a really important point that I'm trying to convey to my audience, I may increase my volume, I may slow down, I may get quiet, right? Depending on how I'm trying to present that information. We talk about this all the time in public speaking coaching. Mm -hmm. I think having the ability to project your voice and being loud enough so that the person in the back of the room can hear you is very important, but even more important, and I think this is what you're getting at, is uh, knowing when to use that tool. You know, you need to have the tools available to mm -hmm. you, and you need to be, you need to have a facility with those tools, but you need to know when to use which tool. You know, some jobs are better for a hammer, some jobs are, uh, some, a hammer is better for some jobs, mm -hmm. a screwdriver is better for other jobs. They're, they're all tools that you need. Right. You know, but it's your job as a communicator to be able to identify which is the right tool for the job.